Africa. A continent well known for its sensational landscapes, rich and diverse culture and iconic wildlife species, including the famous Big Five. But there's more. Africa is also home to some of the most venomous snakes that this planet has to offer. On this journey, we take you deep into the South African bushveld. This is where we can find Africa's five most venomous snakes. These are the venomous five. This is a Southern African python. It's a non-venomous constrictor, so it's not one of our five target species yet, but this is by far the biggest snake species that we can find in Southern Africa. Oh, whoa, whoa. See, it's calling up. Look, it's like a spring. It is just like a spring. Do you see that? Chuck, 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 chuck. So I come here, bites me, you know? It's an incredibly big strike range with a snake this size, but even though, now we can have a look at the size here, look at that. I would say it's about, no, not too, we just whoop, whoop, whoop. That was close. I don't want to take a whack in the face by a snake like this, got the thorn bush behind me. You take a whack in the face by a snake like this can rip your eye out, no problem at all. So now, you see, that's almost like a behavior like a cobra calling up. There's no way I can touch the snake anywhere without getting a bite from it, absolutely incredible. Southern African pythons can grow over 5 meters in length and they usually prey on warm-blooded prey such as small antelopes, rodents or monkeys. But they're also known to occasionally eat monitor lizards or even crocodiles. Now, interesting if you come close to the head, the rock python, like some other pythons, they have what we call heat sensing pits. So those heat sensing pits, they just right underneath the nostrils on the specimen here, or on this species basically. So only some pythons actually have heat sensing pits and also some pit vipers, they do have them. So they use them when it comes to um, detecting prey that is not even moving. So they can actually sense where there's the prey not moving without actually even smelling, which is perfect for them to hit their uh, prey nicely. And I can also sense which spots out here are actually warmer and which are cooler, which helps them when it comes to thermoregulating because like all reptiles, they're cold-blooded. So they need to make sure that they're not in a too warm environment. And also when it's cold, they need to make sure to heat up in order to function properly. Take care, buddy. Finding a snake in the wild is quite a rare occurrence. They prefer to hide underground, inside hollow logs, or even up in trees. The first snake on our list isn't found up in trees though. In fact, it likes to camouflage on the ground so well that it most often goes undetected. This caterpillar-like moving creature is known as the puff adder. It is one of the deadliest snakes in Africa as it causes many human fatalities every year. But this is not because it is an aggressive animal. Like all snakes, puff adders just want to be left alone. But because they are distributed in most parts of Africa and they can usually be found in close proximity to human settlements, puff adders are often involved in human snake conflict. It is widely believed that accidentally stepping onto a puff adder causes these many bites. A field study though found out that these snakes are, in fact, quite reluctant to bite, even when being stepped on. So on this one right here is just perfectly camouflaged. Do you see that? Incredibly camouflaged in this leaf litter and amongst these sticks and pieces of wood. Now the puff adder is like what we call an ambush predator, like a hunter snake. 
So what they do, they will just sit in like this position, even underneath a piece of bark for days, not moving. Sometimes they're not even moving for weeks. And then they have like a very, very low metabolism, which allows them to actually go without eating for up to a year. So and then they think that prey comes to them. So let's say that's like a little rat or even like a small mouse for this small puff adder, like a small mouse, lizard, or even like a small snake coming through. As soon as the prey comes within strike range, the puff adder will strike so hard and fast that nothing can go out of its way. Then they will actually envenomate and let go in most of the time. And then the prey will succumb to the venom really quickly. It might wander off even three meters away. But then the puff adder will use its sense of smell to locate the prey, follow the track, and eat the mouse. Now even though he might be like 10 mouses in the whole colony wandering through, the puff adder bites the mouse and there's mouse smell everywhere. Then the puff adder will actually know which one is the one that it envenomated because it has a different smell then. It's absolutely incredible, they smell 10,000 times stronger than us. Absolutely wild. Though the specimen is still a youngster, it could kill a person with one bite. The puff adder's venom is predominantly cytotoxic which means it has a cell-destroying venom. Once bitten, you would feel extreme pain. The bite side will extensively swell and flesh muscles, even bone, will be deteriorated by the venom. If left untreated, bacteria infection or hypovolemic shock may then kill the victim, typically one to three days after the bite. Fortunately, this gives us valuable time and only a small amount of bites actually result in death. It is suggested that a significant portion of bites also occur because people underestimate the puff adder. When hurt, necked behind the head or otherwise threatened, the puff adder can strike with phenomenal speed. So quick that once within strike range, a bite is unavoidable. And in fact they can strike in 0.25 seconds, that means lunging forward, getting the fangs in, ejecting venom and then going back into a starting position in a quarter of one second. So if it wants to, it can bite four times in a single second. So this one right here with the death adder are the number one most fastest striking snakes in the entire world. You actually need like a slow motion camera to see the strike properly. The puff adder is far from a fat and lazy snake. It's an incredibly powerful striker that packs a punch. But as long as we leave puff adders alone and watch where we step, we will always be safe. The snake we are about to encounter has quite a different lifestyle. It doesn't feel safe on the ground at all. Check this out right here. The snake sitting in this bush is known as the Halivenomous Bormstang. It is usually found up in trees, but sometimes it might descend to the floor, for instance to escape possible threats, such as me and my cameraman. And there it goes! I have to be so careful now. One mistake and I could be in a world of trouble. The bombslung is the number one most venomous snake in all of Africa, and it has one of the strongest venoms of any snake on earth. One microscopic drop is enough to kill up to 25 men. So its venom is called a hemotoxic venom, which is wild. So if this snake bites me, um, the symptoms will be bleeding. I'll be bleeding out my nose, I'll be bleeding out of my eyes, and when you go to a toilet, you also start peeing blood. Lucky for us though, even though the snake is super toxic, we have about two up to seven days to get medical treatment. Um, so there's an anti-venom for the snake in Johannesburg, so it's about six hours, seven hour drive from here. But it's still enough, obviously, to um, save a person's life that would be bitten here in this area. Now what is interesting about this specimen here, you can see the color. This is like an olive color, and this right here originally be considered a female. The way I can tell is because just of the color. So this snake is what we call sexually dimorphic. So we are able to tell the gender of this snake by just looking at it. So the males, they will actually be green, yellow, or even blue, while the females are like um, a brown coloration, sometimes even black, 
or grey. Because of their colors, bomsangs are often confused with green and black mambas. To identify snakes, it is recommended to look at the head shape rather than the color of the body. This snake has a small round head with big eyes, whereas the mambas have a long edgy head with a smiling mouth. Bomsangs have tiny fangs in the back of their mouth right underneath the eyes, as they are venomous members of the colubrid snake family. Contrary popular belief, this snake can still envenomate a person on the arm, leg or forehead. This is because it can open its mouth up to 160 degrees. But unlike most other venomous snakes, the Bomsang's fangs are grooved, not hollow. Therefore, they have to chew in order for the venom to be injected effectively. And you can see, look at this. Look at the way it's wrapping around my fingers. This is just another example, it's just perfect um, what a climate they got. They don't got no arms, they don't got no legs like a monkey. But this right here, this is basically their arm. See that? Absolutely magnificent how it's just wrap around here. And that is just to get a hole because the snake right now, as you can see, it's only fixed in this hook stick and on my hand. It doesn't want to fall. Perfect. What an incredible specialist. Despite its venom toxicity, the bomsang causes only very few bites and even fewer fatalities. This is mainly due to its shy nature and its secretive life up in trees far away from people. What a sweet snake! I will let her go now so she can go back up her thorn bush. My name is Lars aka LB and I have a very important message to all of my viewers. I am a reptile expert venomous snake handler and I'm a trained professional. Still, I'm far from being safe. When dealing with wild animals, anything can happen at any time. I urge all of my viewers to never try to approach or handle any potentially dangerous wildlife. Please, don't copy or reenact anything you see here on LV Wildlife. Have a look at the size of these stones here. Check this out. This one gotta be at least about like five centimeters in length. Let me see if I can get it off of here. Oh, there you go. Look at the size of this one. Imagine this going through your hand. That's about the size of a fang of a gaboon viper. You know, it's incredible, it's huge. So if you walk through here in Africa, almost everything is like covered in thorns. Now the reason for that, of course, are the big amounts of herbivores that we have here in Africa. So, of course, I'm talking about like elephants, buffalo and also plenty of impala and they like to feed on plants. So, if they would not have thorns, they would basically eat everything that is in the area here. So, you might think, but these animals, they still feed on plants, right? So, are thorns actually useless? No, they're actually not because if you look closely here, you can see that we have some green leaves growing right there. So, what an impala would do they would not eat the whole bush, but what they would actually do is just carefully pick those green leaves and eat them. And the entire plant itself would still be there. Only animals like elephants or even rhinos, they can eat the entire branch here with all the thorns on it. It has no effect on them at all. The African bush is as tough as they come and getting sliced open by thorns on the regular is just part of this whole experience. But besides thorns, we also got hooked up with a great safari car, as we are on the lookout for wildlife. Hey, there's something in the tree! Check this out right here, this is what we call a rock monitor. It's a small one, it's puffing up right now, so it's like, oh look at me, I'm big. Ooh, check this one out here. These rock monitor lizards are considered to be among the most intelligent of all reptiles. People oftentimes consider reptiles to be instinctive machines, but new and advanced studies show that their cognitive capabilities are much greater than previously assumed. Now we can have a nice look. This right here is the rock monitor lizard, or also called the rock liguan. Now interesting about these guys that they actually smell just like snakes. They have a forked tongue, they stick out and it's forked, so it basically knows 
well, just like snakes, from which direction um, the smell is coming from. And look at the eyes, it's just looking around, ooh, ooh, what's going on there? Now the color is obviously made, uh, perfect for when it comes to camouflage. And they have very sharp claws, perfect for a life up in trees. Because especially at this age, when they're small like that, they oftentimes be found in trees because they're away from predators, or at least most of them. And interesting about the pattern you can see, like all reptiles, they're covered in scales. Like all reptiles, you know. Reptiles are cold-blooded animals with scales. So that's how you can identify them. And these scales are extremely rough. And it's a very thick skin, incredibly thick. So it's very well protected from bites and scratches from other animals. And this right here is a baby. So I would reckon it's not even half a year old because they can grow well over like one meter in length. That one's about like maybe 30 centimeters. They can actually go up to about like one and a half meters. So now I'll put it back in the tree. So uh, this guy had enough of me. This one definitely doesn't want to be hauled anymore. To so put it high up there away from predators. Somewhere over here where I caught it nicely. Somewhere like right there. Hold on to it. Good. Good lizard, look at here. So that's a nice claw right there. And uh, yeah, you know, that's what I do. So a nice defense, you know. But now it's like, yeah, you didn't kill me, I'm still alive. Quick up you go, buddy. Don't get eaten so fast, eh? The rock monitor, awesome. And right by we find what this baby rock monitor has to watch out for. Whoa, whoa. hey snouted cobra, check this out. This is a big one. This is the snouted cobra, and this one's just calm. Look at this one, it's just completely calm. And I can feel it's very cold. It's quite a cold day today. And look at it, that's a typical sign of a cobra. The typical hood. So it's gonna come down nicely like that. Woo -hoo -hoo. There it is, a snouted cobra, look at that. Phenomenal hood. So the cameraman just got the attention there of the snake. And that's a warning sign. So that's the second warning. So the first warning, the snakes will actually try to get out of your way. The second warning would then be flattening out and doing a hood. Snakes don't bite easy. In fact, it takes quite an effort to get bitten by any snake. Before they bite, they usually give us different warning signs, such as hissing, rattling, spreading a hood, opening their mouth, or even playing dead. Cobras may also perform a so-called mock strike. All of these actions are used as a defense. They are not a sign of aggression. We should always take these warning signs serious, especially with the snouted cobra. These species have an incredibly potent neurotoxic venom which will affect the nervous system and shut down the ability to breathe, leading to suffocation. One bite can kill an adult human in less than one hour. There you go, all right. So that's like a mock strike, did you see that? That's some mock strikes when you walk here to their natural habitat. And ooh, there's a cobra, you see? That is a pretend bite. So if they can't get out of your way, you ignore the hood. That is the third warning, which we call the mock strike. So I can display it again for you here, you see that? Coming up, you see that? It's and then they come forward like that, opening okay. the mouth slightly. So what you do when you encounter a snake like this, you're here in the wild. Whoa, there's a snake. What you do is just move back slowly like that. And the snake has a very bad eyesight. It still thinks I'm standing right here. Okay? And then you just ease yourself out of the situation and just make a big way around the snake. And that is how you always will be safe. Now also interesting fact about it. Also interesting fact about the snouted cobra is that they usually also prey on other snakes. So on their menu mainly is the puffetta. So they will usually prey on the puffetta and they're actually immune to other snakes' venom. So if a puffetta comes, bites the snake, has no effect. If the bomb slung or the black mamba comes, bite this snake, has no effect at all. But when the snouted cobra bites bomb slung, puffetta or the black mamba, they all die. So it's a wild species, but of course they also prey on rats and mice squirrels, anything that they can basically overpower, even other lizards, and as I said, other snakes, mainly the legendary Pafada. Alright, so One, you see now it's three. calming down a little bit, you can see the hood is like flattening, but when I move, whoa, you see that? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Then it gives you this warning, it's another mock strike right there, but as I said, they can get tired when they do this all the time, and they will start laying dead, you know? 
see that typical hood right there I don't want to stress it too much I don't want to risk a bite or anything but you can see it's very interesting I'm doing the mock strike and oh, I look here look there and it's mock striking and I'm playing around with it but interestingly if you look at this snake and me I'm walking around trying to neck it and I picked it up out of there and I handled it and it still hasn't even moved yet there's no glass between me and the snake it's not coming towards me and that proves once and for all that they don't want to bite us they don't want to waste their venom on us they just sit there calling them up like this so they're safe there's no way I can touch the snake anywhere absolutely beautiful snake the snouted cobra and you can see slowly it was just here a couple of minutes ago now it's moving away from me very slowly trying to uh, seek shelter back there and the first chance that I will give the snake to get away from me it will and it will take off and go off on its way in here in the bush so I tried to put it back where it was come on buddy you're all right I see you're a big snake I see you're a big snake come here the next snake on our list is the most venomous cobra in all of Africa. It's the Cape Cobra. Cape Cobras don't occur in northern parts of South Africa, so we head back to the Kinyonga Reptile Center. It's a world-class research and conservation facility and it's also home to a couple Cape Cobras. This is Nadja Nivea, also known as the Cape Cobra. And this snake right here is the number three most venomous snake in Africa. Today, we're gonna to get it out of this bucket and we're gonna have a look at it because in this area here, the snake will not be found. As the name suggests, it's mainly home to Southern South Africa in the Cape area. So, this right here, out of all cobra species found in Africa, is the most venomous. Now the Cape Cobra is very, very notorious for its defensive behavior. Here we go, let's check this out. Woo, look at the colors on this one. Isn't it just magnificent? And it tries to get away there quick. You see that? It doesn't stand its ground. Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna put it here in the shadows because it's a very warm day today. You can see it's very active. Good snake there. Let's do this. All right. Now this is one of the smaller Cobra species. And they can average about um, 1 meter 20, 1 meter 40 in length. And um, unfortunately, though, a lot of people in the Cape area get bitten by the species right here. And bites are often fatal. So this snake right here is highly neurotoxic, which means that the venom will affect your nervous system. Okay? So the way you're going to die is because of respiratory failure. And death can occur in just one hour sometimes about two hours, three hours, depending on many factors. The venom is very, very rapidly absorbed by the body's tissue, which is very unfortunate as some people actually die before they can actually get anti-venom for the species right here. Now, it's just trying to get away from me here. You can see that. It doesn't like to be out in the open because every predator like birds of prey or um, any other um, animal that will usually prey on the snake like mongoose they will try to prey on it right here in the open. So the snake doesn't want to be here. So they're not coming for me. You see, I'm right here. Snake, I'm here. It cannot even hear me. It's death, but it sees me. It knows I'm here and it moves away. You see that? 
it moves away, completely away from me. It's not biting me. And right now it's completely relaxed, not showing me any defensive display. Like all cobras, they spread a hood. Look at this one, it's calmed down now. There's no hood, it's relaxed. You see, it's relaxing with me right now. And I'm gonna tell you what, one of the most beautiful snakes on the planet, as well as deadly. And there you can see a little bit of a hood. And that is a defensive display, not an aggressive behavior. Gotta let it go here. So if you're ever in the Cape area and you encounter a snake like this, the best thing for you is just stand still. What they usually do is they spread a hood and they stand the ground. And as long as you avoid them, as long as you try to get away from them, move back slowly, you will never, ever, ever have a problem with a snake like this, okay? They only bite you if you try to catch or kill. So never do that. Always stay out of their way, leave them alone, they will leave you alone. Beautiful snake, just enjoy the color. We should rather have more respect for these animals rather than fear. This is why I'm here, this is why I'm watching this, because I want to educate you on these animals. I want to show you their true behavior and I want to show you what to do when encountering them so you're not going to be one of those people that are going to be bitten. I'm going to put it back in its bucket now, it's pretty warm on the outside here. Come on, buddy. Woo, check this out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. As night falls across the savanna, a whole other world is just waking up. A different group of nocturnal animals appear, venturing through the bushveld. These include some of the continent's rarest and most elusive species, such as leopards, African seabirds, or pangolins. For those who explore the wilderness on foot, Turner's dictoid geckos are a more common sight. Under the cover of darkness, several scorpion species emerge from their hiding spots. In search for food, they are looking for smaller insects, little lizards, or even other scorpions. Like all scorpions, this flat rock scorpion is venomous. Nevertheless, it is considered harmless, as its venom has no significant effect on humans. It's barely strong enough to immobilize its prey. But not all African scorpions are this harmless. Ooh, 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 I think, yeah, this is like a hairy, fat tailed scorpion, they call this one here. Wow, look at this one. This is a highly venomous species. There are 2,000 different scorpion species, but only about 25 can kill a fully grown person. This one is one of them, as it is among the top five most venomous scorpion species in the world. Armed with potent neurotoxic venom, this is one scorpion you don't want to be stung by. I can put it on here like that. Look at this. This right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's called the hairy fat tail scorpion. You can see why I call it the fat tail scorpion. Really, really fat tail and a fat body because it seems to be pregnant. Now this one right here is highly venomous. Its venom is called a neurotoxic venom. So basically it will affect your nervous system. You can actually have troubles breathing with this one. You can actually also, if you are um, a very small person, a child or especially a weakened person, you can actually get in trouble and might die. No problem at all. They carry enough venom to kill a person, but they might not of course release all that venom. And um, you can see the size of that sting is absolutely enormous for the size of this scorpion and very small pincers. So that's like a basic rule for scorpions. Um, so this one here shows you doesn't kill its prey by the pincers, but rather, gotta be careful there, by the, um, the venom. Now interesting about these guys is they can actually flick their venom through the air. That's why I'm just, you know, keeping my distance from it and keeping a little bit sideways because they can actually flick their tail out 
and the venom just goes through the air, almost like a spitting cobra. You know, they can use their venom as defense like that without even injecting. The spitting fat hair scorpion is one scorpion with two different types of venom. It usually uses a more efficient yet less potent mixture which is used to immobilize its prey. This type is referred to as pre-venom. But if the prey still retaliates or as a form of defense, it will then use a much more potent venom. The hairy fat tail scorpion. Harley venom is found here in South Africa and a beautiful species. Awesome. A nocturnal reptile of the area is this common egg-eater. Despite not having any limbs at all, the common egg-eater has no problem climbing up trees vertically. While spending the daytime hiding away, commonly in abandoned burrows, they come out at night to look for a very special type of food. And as the name suggests, they actually feed on eggs only, which is absolutely wild, so they don't even have teeth. What they do is they just swallow an egg that's about five to six, seven times the size of their head. And then they crush the shell with the vertebrates. These are wild animals. And uh, so what they will do then, they basically the shell will just come out of their mouth in one piece, hold together by the underlying skin inside the egg. And the insides will of course then just be swallowed by the snake. So in order to swallow like an egg like this, the lower jaw of the snake is extremely flexible. So just like a spoon, it goes around the egg like this, sucks it in, and then with the vertebrates they crush the shell. trying to be very calm. The black mamba. Wow. This one right here is huge. Look at the size of this one here. I reckon it's about two, two meter like 20 or something. Maybe even bigger than that. It's absolutely enormous. To complete the venomous five, here comes the black mamba. This is considered to be the world's most dangerous snake. That is mainly because of its extremely fast acting venom. It primarily consists of neurotoxins, which lead to paralysis, especially of nerves that control breathing and heart rate. In serious cases of envenomation, a human can die in less than 20 minutes. And um, some people, they are also allergic to the venom. So then they fall in what we call anaphylactic shock. There's been a guy that actually got bitten by a snake here in Africa. He was milking the snake and actually died in just a couple minutes because he was allergic to the venom, highly allergic to it. Now, the black mamba here, of course, not only is it like highly venomous, but also it's very big. So you can see when it's trying to defend itself, it can actually spread a hood a little bit. I'll just try to display that in just a moment. But they can also stand up. So a big four meter specimen, imagine that, that can actually give me a proper bite to the chest, which is horrible because you cannot get a pressure bandage around it. This is why it's one of the deadliest snakes in the world. And also they give you warning signs, like first of all, they would try to move away from us. Second of all, they give us this black inky mouth. That's where it's got its name from. They call it the black mamba, not because of the color. You see the color is like gray to brown. But actually, the inside of the mouth is like um, a peach black. And then, the word mamba is actually a Swahili name and it translates to crocodile. 
right? So I'm just trying to show you the snake's behavior. You can see this now. Listen. It's highly alert. Do you see that? It's basically inflating its throat, making like a hissing sound. I'm trying to put it nicely right where you're standing right now, into the uh, ground area there. You all right, buddy? Come on here. Trying to come from this side. And I also can show you the colors. So you can see this color right here, if you look around us, it's the same color as all the trees here. Look at this tree right here. It's almost the same color as the color of the black mamba. And now I will show you the belly, because the belly of this snake is actually light blue, which is perfect for camouflaging, because this snake is not only found on ground, but also especially in trees. So it's both a terrestrial species as well as an arboreal species. So try to come here nicely. It's awkward now. Come on. There you go, that's a good snake. And you see, it's trying to get away from me. It's not coming towards me. Look at the color. Look at the color of the belly. Woo hoo hoo! And that's a big mama here. Absolutely huge. Now it's trying to get away from here. Pull it back there nicely. Come on, buddy. Okay, I just let it go because it's too powerful. They don't want to hurt it. As you can see, it's just trying to get away from me. It's not even showing any um, defensive behavior anymore. It's just trying to get away. But I don't want to get it away so we can see it here nicely. Look at that. Today's a very cold day. So it was probably just out here basking. So now as you saw, the light blue color of the belly is perfect when it comes to um, camouflaging up in trees. So if you look up in the sky, basically it has the exact same color. So it's very hard to detect this species. Like all reptiles, they're everywhere here. There's the puff adder is here, it could be right there. And I wouldn't even know it because these snakes are excellent when it comes to camouflage. Despite its reputation, the black mamba is generally a shy and anxious snake. If it senses danger, it will try to escape immediately. Stories of black mambas chasing people or falling out of trees to bite people on the head are just that, stories. If we come across an individual and we retreat slowly, the snake will do the same. But if we actively threaten a black mamba, like when we corner one or during an attempt to catch or kill a specimen, the situation will turn extremely dangerous really quickly. Black mammas do not hesitate to defend themselves through biting readily when they sense danger. Due to their size and incredible speed, their strike range is enormous. And um, even though there's anti-venom here in Africa all over the place, the mortality rate of this snake is still 75%. So if you get bitten, you only have about a 25% chance of surviving because the venom is just killing people so quick and um, actually quicker than they can get medical attention in hospitals, which is absolutely crazy. All right, so I'm just trying to get it back into frame here. Look at that. Woo hoo hoo, the black mamba. Now, a lot of snakes in this region actually look just like the black mamba. Oh, you're right there. They look just like the black mamba. And actually, they have like the same coloration. It's fine, they like this olive brown coloration. You see this here. Interesting also, if you look at the color, it changes its color through its body. So you can see here, it's much darker than in the front. And the way you basically identify the snake from any other here is by looking at the head. So I'm gonna show you the head here. Look at this, the head is like what we call coffin shaped. It's a coffin shaped head, long head and medium sized eyes. And um, it also has the smiley mouth, you can see that. It's like smiling for the camera right there, you see that? A smiley mouth, medium-sized eyes, a coffin-shaped head, a really small head if you look at it. Not even that small, but quite small for the rest of its body. Absolutely beautiful specimen. And you can see how it's just smelling right now. It's looking around what's going on. It's trying to figure out if that situation is a dangerous one or not. And they actually have a um, smell that is 10,000 times stronger than our sense of smell. And their tail here is just perfect for wrapping around trees and um, preventing it from falling. Look at this, absolutely perfect. Wow, what a privilege for me to have such an amazing encounter with the legendary black mamba and to be able to share it with you. This is a moment that I will treasure forever. Besides the well-known Big Five, we might also admire and respect other equally magnificent species 
that we share this planet with. The Venomous Five are often misunderstood, hated and killed, whereby they're extremely valuable in their ecosystem, in which they just mind their own business and want to be left alone. As we start to acknowledge this and pay these animals the proper respect they deserve, we shall see that snakes are not our enemies, but our friends.